So you're here in Toronto with the emergency. Can you describe what you're promoting? Because your album, your solo album, just came out last year, yeah. and then now there's a DVD. So are you promoting both at the same time, or? Well, I mean, we're we're just, you know, as a band, it's this sort of there's this weird thing like there's this idea that you go and you promote what you do, and that's exactly what you do. But it's the the problem with the uh, the, the the music industry is. It takes so long to get things out. You can't just put out a single and go out and do shows. Hey, we got a new song. Let's put it out in the world. Like, theoretically, you can do that with the internet, but the actual lead-up time for record releases is really like long. You know, it takes so long to get things out in the world. So, we're promoting both those things. I mean, the DVD make a little noise, which has the three-song EP, which has the three new tracks that we did, nowhere with you, million dollars, and make a little noise. And those. So we're uh, essentially we're still promoting that, and also working our way up towards making another record in December, which will come out probably in the spring. How supportive is Canadian radio? Is it hard to find a a niche, or how would you describe it? Um, I mean, uh, ra radio is you know there's a lot of different kinds of radio. There's commercial radio, there's college radio, there's CBC. You know, there's sort of government sponsored radio. College radio has embraced me since. Thrush Hermit started, you know, we were, we were really lucky. I, I, so I, I love the, I mean, I love the magic of radio when you're driving and you stumble upon a song you've never heard or a song that you love. That's really magical to me. It's fun, getting harder and harder to find those moments because things are getting more, you know, but uh, corporate control and all this stuff is playing a big thing in commercial radio. But having said that, satellite radio has kind of opened it back up a bit and now you've got these avenues in which to find things. Uh, but I have fond memories of driving across Canada in my, uh, in, well, in particular in a 69 Pontiac that I bought by myself. I bought it in Victoria and drove it back to Halifax, and all I had was an AM radio. So just trying to find stuff of interest on AM radio, you know. And, and occasionally you stumble upon magic, you know. So I remember the first time I heard Walk Away, Renee, by the left bank. I'd never heard that song. I knew, I'd heard the title, but I'd never actually heard the song. And that was on AM radio, and I was like, wow. This is such an amazing song. I've never heard it before. So it blew my mind, you know? So there's radio and then there's TV commercials. You had one of your songs in a TV commercial. Yeah. Can you maybe describe how that happened and what company it was for? Um, well, it was uh, Zeller's commercial. We had a song, Nowhere With You, in the Zeller's ad. And, 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 and sort of since then, I have really reaped the benefits of uh, commercial radio playing that song a lot because I think uh, the, the momentum that that Zeller's campaign helped bring to it, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, you never know how you're going to reach people. And that was the way we, uh, we, were, we were offered, um, uh, somebody contacted us through, through, through Maple. Um, there was a, a, a company pitching for, you know, pitching songs for the Zeller's ad and ours got shortlisted and got picked. They thought it was appropriate for the commercial. And, I got a phone call. Hey, do you want your song in a Zeller's ad? It looks like it might happen. And I thought about it. I, you know, I said, I'll call you back in five minutes. Let me think about it. Because I think about everything, you know. I mean, to some bands, it would be an obvious yes. To other bands, it might be like a definite no, depending on what, you know, what kind of, you know, what scenario, where you are in your career, what you, you know, where you want your music placed and stuff. I thought about it, and I, th I didn't see a whole lot of negatives, uh, you know. It, certainly, if it had been an organization that I really had some a lot of knowledge about that I was opposed to or something I would have uh, uh, might have weighed differently but I, the, the lines you know it, you have to sort of take these opportunities that present themselves and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that they chose it I kind of liked the ad actually I thought it was kind of you know uh, it was at least fun and I, you know I, 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 so to me it's been a great thing so tell me about the, the new record coming up uh, have you finished recording it or are you still adding stuff and how is that working um uh uh, we're, we haven't recorded it all yet. Just working on the songs right now. We're gonna. It's gonna be produced by Gordy Johnson, who did the last three songs. He was in a band called Big Sugar, and now has a new band called Grady. Great producer, and uh, really hitting it off with him. You know, it's work, been working out well. He came up to Halifax to do some pre-production with with me and the band um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, away we go. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be a fun record. I think it's shaping up to be a bit of a rock opera concept record. It's gonna be fun.